Hello GD150 class and welcome to the instruction for the date of March 30th and the second week of our remote online instruction. Some of you are doing really well online. Um, if you're one of the people that are falling behind though, catch up. You know, y y there's not a whole lot else to do I'm finding. So may as well get caught up on stuff. Uh, I mean, actually, I wish that were true. I, I don't have any time at all right now. But um, I give a generous two-week time frame to turn in late work. So um, if you are, you know, falling behind, just keep that in mind. You know, you only lose uh, minus four points the first week that it's past due, minus eight the second week that it's past due, and some points is way better than none. And passing a class during this time is a way better use of your time than a lot of other things you know if if you're not strapped doing something else so i like to just think of it as getting something good out of this bad situation which could be some college classes um and so that you can spend less time watching my weekly videos i will do less repetition i'm not going to tell you you know how to turn in this week's stuff because that would have been covered last week. So the first part of my videos will just be to catch you up on any big changes for this week or let you know if, if there's you know some new way of turning in stuff from what I said last week. But otherwise, watch the videos that came before. Make a checklist. I think I've emphasized this in this class, but if not, my big advice to every student right now is make checklists for each class and as you're watching, you know, in my case, it's an instructional video from another instructor. It might be um, conference Zoom. Um, but either way, make a checklist of things that you need to do before you turn that next work in so that you get it turned in properly. And then your instructors can spend more time answering questions and not having to chase you for work that's incomplete and, and things like that. Okay, so um with that in mind let's go over what is due next week and before i get to that just one more thing um in last week's video not only did i go over how to turn everything in for today but there's also a lot of stuff in there about alternate ways of getting the storyboard uh completed so that a you get a grade on it and b that they're in on time so that you can get feedback from your classmates and myself all right, now for our next class, which is April 6th. We have the storyboard is due. And these would normally be mounted on black map boards, but last week I talked about alternate ways of doing this. Um, and if you have to take photos uh, of it or, or, well, you will either have to take photos or create digital versions right within the software. Either way is fine by me as long as we can tell what's going on. But try to keep that to a maximum of four files. So if taking a photo from too far back, you don't feel like it does justice to your storyboard or you don't think that when we open it up, we'll be able to see it good enough to tell what's going on, then yes, by all means, get up closer and take a shot of say, um, as little as one quarter of it. So a shot here, move it down a little bit, another one, another one, another one, um, and then upload those individual files into the, uh, the post for next week. All right. Um, and normally I'm not a big fan of numbering storyboards, but if you have to break them into more than one image um, or file, that should say or not of, um, that would be a good idea is to number them so that if we happen to open up the wrong file first and we see that it starts on 11, we'll be like, oh, this obviously is not the first one. Okay, so that's the big deal for next week is getting that storyboard ready and turned in. And then the other uh, big category item is the preparation work for the electronic storyboard. So again, you finish the normal storyboard, which would have been printed, mounted on Blackboard, whether you drew it or whether you did it by electronic means.
then you do an electronic storyboard, which you can almost think of as taking your storyboard, breaking it down into individual frames within the software of Adobe Animate and creating almost like a PowerPoint of it um, set to sound. Okay, so to get there, you're going to watch the first three videos on instructional set five, which you can find here, or you can just simply go to the Prof. Steve G. site, instructional videos, find the class, set five. And so you have uh, videos here that are designed to help you with that electronic storyboard. And make sure you, you watch all these. There may be parts that don't particularly apply to you. Um, and it, for this, and I stress, don't get confused. We're no longer talking about the storyboard itself. I already gave you instructions for that. But for the electronic storyboard, if you did do drawings, you might have to, to get up close, take a picture of as little as one drawing at a time, and then import it into the software. Um, if you're good with Photoshop, you could probably do multiple drawings at a time and then crop them in Photoshop. But if you don't have the time to learn Photoshop, then just get up really close, shoot one at a time, bring it into the software, and uh, make it fit within the window. Um, but there's all kinds of little tidbits of advice in here for working with the items and getting them in. And then um, sound is a big issue for this um, electronic storyboard because we want the background sound, whether it's a, a song or sound effects or both. And remember, you can go online and look for royalty free uh, or copyright free background music and sounds and use those in the video, even in the contest, as long as they are royalty free. And some of them may say that you can use this royalty free as long as you give me credit. And then in the very last couple seconds of the animation, you just say, you know, um, cut a royalty free music courtesy of and then you put the the website or the person's name or whatever they ask you for um, but anyway that that'll get you there and then there's some ad optional ones like sometimes people take a bunch of images and want to know how to adjust a whole bunch at one time so that's what that one's for i guess it's only one optional one in there and also speaking of royalty free music, I put a link in last week's announcement. So for the 30th that had a link in there to a site that that has a bunch of different uh, royalty free stuff on it. So obviously this bullet point is covered in those videos. Uh, there will be no option to scan in class, of course. The electronic storyboard will be due on the 13th of April. So let's go ahead and look out, look at the handout for the electronic storyboard because there's one more element that's included for roughly half of your grade in there and that is what I call just a stab at the hardest part of your final animation and I'll tell you why I do that is and you can see right here number 11 is the electronic storyboard um, what I've had in the past is I get students that have gone through all the instruction that you've received from frame by frame animating to you know shape tweening to classic tweening and then they come up with this storyboard of this animation that they want to complete by the end of the class and they go now what where's the videos for this well you now know after completing the midterm all of the basic and in some actually quite advanced items in Adobe Animate. So the idea is that you now know enough to make this animation so that nobody gets what I call a, a, a paralysis by analysis, sitting there thinking about it too much. I ask you as part of this assignment to do the hardest part of your animation. Okay, so we'll talk more about that at the end, but let's get back to just the electronic part of the storyboard. So in the file for the electronic storyboard, you can have a file that's somewhere between 25 and, you know, actually up to three minutes, but 25 to 65 is usually my recommendation. The minimum for the competition is 60 seconds and the maximum is three minutes. Um, it must contain your sound. 
So don't even start without that because that's an integral part of your animation. When you have things that are happening, happening in an animation, it's often very engaging to the user if those things happen to the beat of the music. So like look for drum beats, you know, like the going on in the music. And, you know, maybe every fourth one is when the person's, uh, you know, left foot or well, left and right foot is hitting the ground or something like that. Or, you know, it, it just it makes the viewer get locked into your animation. All right. Um, proper use of actions. The movie will launch stopped. So that means when you do the command return, the movie is going to pop up and it's not going to play. I don't care if you put a play button in it or not, um, but it should stop at the beginning and it should stop at the end. The main reason for that is so that we can test to see if you did the sound right. The sound should follow the video, um, follow the animation which is covered in those videos that I just mentioned. We should have a really good sense of what your final animation is going to feel like after just watching these still frames. So 20 still frames will come up as we're listening to your sounds. Now you don't spread them out equally. You put them where they occur in the animation. So if somebody is running at the beginning and tackling another character or something, you might have five frames come up like bam, 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 one after another. And then if that person that got tackled is sitting there looking disgusted or something, that look might last for three, four seconds. So then you might go a while with just that one frame sitting there. So there is no pace other than the pace that makes sense for your animation, which again should last somewhere between 25 and 65 seconds. Um, because the storyboard contained 20 frames, you should have a minimum of 20 keyframes here, one for each frame of the storyboard. Um, now I put, did you scan and import your images? But obviously uh, you will get them in there somehow, some way. Watch those videos and take whatever you made your files as, you know, whether it's a JPEG that came from a camera, a PNG that came from a screenshot, a JPEG that you exported from Illustrator, whatever it takes to, to get it done. Um, and in fact, if you were in Illustrator, you'd probably be better off just to copy and paste into the frames in Animate. Um, your stage should be a minimum of 80 pixels or 800 pixels in one direction by 800 or less in the other direction. So in other words, if it's 800 pixels wide by 500 pixels tall, that's fine. If it's 800 by 800, that's even fine. That would, you know, be a square. Uh, if it's only, you know, 499 wide, by 800 tall, that's okay. It would look more like a like a cell phone frame. Whatever you think makes the most sense for yours. Um, does the animation, even though it's not really an animation yet, follow the sound as much pos as much as possible with only the keyframe? So if somebody is getting their foot stomped with a hammer in frame number seven, and we hear the hammer hammer sound come down, clank, that's where it should happen, right? As that image is changing to the foot. And if there's a beat in the music that works equally well for something significant like that, then let it work with the beat of the music. Um, does the sound fade out, which again is covered in those videos that were assigned for this week, um, or end? So at the end of your video, we should either have a song that's going like ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba and ends in your video ends, or otherwise it should fade out nice and gradually at the end. There's nothing worse than a video that the music is like bomba da bomba da bomb, and just comes to a complete stop. It's really like disturbing actually. Okay, now on to the hardest part. All you have to do is start a brand new file. So you'll be turning in four files next week and just jump in at whatever you consider the hardest part of your animation to be. You're probably going to throw this file out. That's the whole point is you're doing something that you're not going to be attached to. This might be something that happens in the middle of your animation. You just give it the best effort that you can with what you know. And then you'll turn in the two files 
uh, FLA files, the two SWIFT files, and name them as you have before.